Naturally, most artists will use color in some form. Female American artist Lee Krasner in this work has a limited color palette anchored by a strong use of black. Here, contemporary artist Amy Silman has used varied hues of complementary colors red and green, as has Singapore artist Jafar Latif in this work with blue and yellow. African American artist Stanley Whitney at first appears to use a lot of color in this piece, but with closer inspection, we see a balance between warm and cool colors. Singaporean artist Ian Wu has a limited color palette here with pale creams and yellow. Scottish artist Sean Scully appears to utilize an almost monochromatic approach, but if you look more closely, different hues are visible with cool, muted colors. For this task, let's try out the technique of Sean Scully. Students often use colors straight out of the bottle, so we will learn about muting some colors on our palette. We will use a grid compositional strategy for our work. This activity is an exploration exercise to build your awareness and skill. Spend about 20 minutes completing this. I'm going to be using tempera paint, which is water-based, but if you are using acrylic, it's pretty much the same process. Feel free to pause or rewind as you progress through. Let's get started. Abstract brush techniques and skills. Muted monochromatic. We're only going to use about half a page for this. First sketch out a box and create some additional vertical and horizontal lines to break up the space. I'm going to use some white, the warm color orange, and the cool color blue, with a little amount of black. You may have some varied brushes, but make sure you have a larger flat brush. Two might be better. I'm going to take some white and mix it with a small amount of orange. I'm going to paint half of my main rectangle. Artists often coat their canvas with a diluted layer of color like this. As you apply colors on top, they are a bit more developed than just applying over plain white. So let's give it a try and see if we notice a difference. I'm going to first go with the dark blue. Note how I apply paint to the brush. I don't scoop it, but drag the brush away from the edge of the pool. I only apply paint halfway up the bristles. I also pat it on the palette to make sure the bristle hairs are closed. I'm going to fill in this first rectangle and use the flat area of the brush to run along the edge to get a crisp line. I can paint the edge here by sliding my brush straight down. I do all the edges first and then fill it in. I try to smoothen out the streaks but you sometimes have to wait until it dries and apply a second coat. I'll repeat this on another area over the pale orange so we can later see if there is a difference. Don't worry too much about perfect edges at this stage. Remember, this is just a practice exercise. I'm now going to take a small amount of blue and mix it with more white so it appears a creamy blue. I'll paint the edges as described before and fill in. Remember, we will be creating different hues of blue to color in the shapes. Now mix your blue with a very small amount of black. When adding black, always start with only about 5%. It's always easier to add more later than to try and remove. We'll fill in another area, keeping balance and contrast in mind as we progress. Using the same dark hue, let's fill in an area over the orange area. I'll also go back and add a second coat to the previous block. I'm only using the one flat brush, so I'm going to give it a wash since I'll be moving on to some lighter tints next. Let's now use mostly white with a small amount of blue and fill in another area. Let's also take some white and add it to the darker shade we used earlier and fill in other sections. They will most likely need two coats. For the next rectangle, let's take the blue and add 50% of orange. These are complementary and can mute each other out. Let's see what happens. So you see an orangey brown is created. Let's apply it to another section. When muting colors like this, it's better to start at small amounts instead of going 50-50. I'll also blow dry it and apply a second coat. I'll wash my brush and put those second coats on the other areas. 
To further unify our work, let's apply some pure orange into an area. I'll also leave that last pale orange area as is. It will further unify our work. So we are done, and the main takeaway to keep in mind is how many different color variations you can make with white, black, or the complementary color. Look closely at the areas that were painted over the orange area and those that were painted over the white. Can you spot a slight difference? Let me quickly show you how many different types of blue-grays can be made by simply playing with the ratios. This is all much more interesting than simply using paint straight out of the bottle. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and gained some insights. Feel free to subscribe. Hit the like button or leave a comment, question, or future video suggestion below. This has been a Blue Rancoon video production. Blue.